Thanks for launching the digital edition of Night Sounds with Bill Pierce. We trust that Bill's commentary will be a source of hope and encouragement during these times. After you listen to this online webcast, please consider a generous contribution to offset costs. Supporting Night Sounds on this platform is easy. Just click the Donate tab. We hope you are blessed listening to this Night Sounds program. Once again, I extend to you a warm welcome to the program Night Sounds. Hi, I'm Bill Pierce. Well, we're meeting a lot of old friends during these moments together, and wouldn't surprise me that we'd have some new listeners, too. If that's the case, a special welcome to you. How do you begin a conversation if you've never met someone before? My experience has been that when two people meet and they've never seen each other, usually the initial subject is weather. That seems to be the easiest thing to discuss. Because it's all around us. It affects our day and our night. As we come together at this point, since we select a different subject each night, come from various directions in our discussion and continuity, I've decided to subtitle these moments Weather Warning. And our music will go right along with this weather pattern. I've watched the storm clouds gather on the horizon. I've listened to the distant thunder roll. I've felt a stronger current in the ocean. And I've felt a stronger current in my soul. I have watched the storm clouds gather on the horizon. I have listened to Thunder roll. I have felt a stronger current in the ocean. I have felt a stronger current in the soul. We start tonight with more extreme weather patterns. We've all been in the midst of a thunderstorm, I'm sure, or high winds, snow. Many have experienced floods, some tornadoes, millions hurricanes. Inclement and extreme weather has touched the major portion of the population. Some areas of the country more than others. And in our program tonight, with the title Weather Warning, we're going to look at some of the more meaningful overtones, spiritually and emotionally, of weather reports and weather warnings. We hear in the background the beautiful sounds of not only weather, but music. From the New World Symphony, second movement. Do you know playing along with the elements in the background? This beautiful melody once again from the classics. And then we're going to sort of dissolve into one of the old hymns of trust. Come, every soul, by sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord. 
So many who've gone through the ravages of the floodwaters, the hurricanes, the tornadoes, have sought for mercy, for help, for deliverance, for rescue. As we look beyond just the natural weather, we're going to bring in the spiritual dimension tonight because this is what carries many through the disasters and the extreme moments of our living. So let's hang on together as we go through the extreme weather of the soul and spirit, which usually is the worst kind. And we'll find rescue and deliverance. Beautiful moments of music and the elements along the way. Dino playing Only Trust Him, along with excerpts of the New World Symphony. Discussing the weather, as we mentioned a moment ago, most of us do, especially when we meet someone or begin a conversation with a person we haven't seen or met before. As we think of disasters, weather-wise, what do we make of them? Are they merely freaks of nature? Nature on the rampage? Some insurance companies would call it an act of God. Maybe they're closest to the truth. God accepts full responsibility for disasters. You recall back in the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 7, he told a king named Cyrus these words, I will bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. Maybe you're saying if you've gone through the holocaust of weather extremes, well, I was looking for somebody to blame for this. But let's remember that God does not work indiscriminately. His ways are always perfect. He makes no mistakes because He is God and He's holy. He can do as He pleases. Even if His ways don't please us. Do you recall after suffering complete humiliations at the hands of God, King Nebuchadnezzar testified in Daniel chapter 4 in the Old Testament. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, What have you done? Tonight, let's make no mistake, God rules this universe in majesty and power. In fact, even Satan must get his permission. Job chapter 1 gives proof to this. St. Augustine said, God either permits things to happen or causes them to happen, even natural disasters. Someone said, especially disasters. We know that blessings come from the Lord, but do calamities? Let's look at Lamentations chapter 3 with these words, quote, Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that both calamities and good things come? 
Why should any man complain when punished for his sins? That's the end of the quote from Lamentations. Punished for our sins? One theologian said, here's a key to understanding some natural disasters. Earthquakes do not happen just because of the fault lines beneath the earth. Sometimes they occur because of faults in the hearts of earthlings. And we look all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Ever since then, God has punished the human race for their sins. Sometime when you're tired of watching ABC Worried News Tonight, or NBC Frightly News, or the CBS Evening Woes, you should sit down and read the 26th chapter of Leviticus, where God told Israel, I will punish you seven times more for your sins. This sounds pretty heavy, doesn't it? There are more than 40 references in the Bible to God's sovereign rule over cities and nations. And really, as we look back in history, especially in the Bible, no one can sin and get by. We recall Sodom went up in smoke. Some say maybe it was a volcanic explosion that rained down fire and brimstone because of the sin there. In Jude 7 we read this. When disaster comes to a city, has not the Lord caused it? These words in Amos, chapter 3 in the Old Testament. God told Ezekiel, if you might recall, he was going to bring four sore judgments, war, famine, desolation, plagues upon Jerusalem, the holy city, because of of their unholy behavior. These words in Ezekiel chapter 14. One historian asked, where do the cities of America get off thinking that they can sin and escape the judgments of God? Or where does any country or any nation on earth think this? Well, this may blow some of us away, but I believe there's some truth to it that some of the disasters that our country has experienced in the last year or two have come as a direct result of abominations committed in and by our nation. As we look back, many of you remember, because you were there and experienced it, we've seen a monster flood in the Midwest. Raging wind-fed fires in California. Devastating earthquake in Los Angeles. That happened to center in the heart of the pornographic film industry district. And record-breaking cold in the upper Midwest and on the East Coast. Billions of dollars in damage. We've had one concert canceled and one almost canceled rescheduled because of the extreme weather in the East Coast, snowfall that caved in roofs of buildings that had been there, some of them a hundred years. Was there a cause for these effects of the weather? To what point, for what purpose, may this have come? If we go back to January 23, 1993, on the third day of the administration, the president wrote executive orders lifting long-standing bans on homosexuality in the military, fetal tissue research, and abortion counseling in federally funded clinics. Now, I would not sit here and say that everything happened because of that, but ultimately we will all account to our God. And tonight, as we hear the Word of God spoken, somebody told me one time, you know, Piers, you hide behind the Bible too much. 
Well, it's the greatest place to hide that I know of. Not hide from responsibility or accountability, but hide from the situations we face that we have no particular explanation for. Does this mean that the people who live in areas that are not touched by the ravages of extreme weather are more holy than others? I don't believe so. But God works as He will, when He will. And as we consider further tonight the effects of climate, weather extremes, natural disasters, we look for a place of refuge, not just from the local holocaust, but from ourselves, from the worst storm which exists within us. When peace like a river attendeth my way When sorrows like sea billows roll Whatever my life Thou hast taught me to say Peace within, where the inner storms well up and sometimes try to take control of our lives, our emotions, our spirits. Tonight's program, Weather Warning. This is Night Sounds. I'm Bill Pierce with you, and very happily so. As I've mentioned many times, we, each night, investigate various kinds of subjects. We come from different directions and trustfully land on matters that relate to all of us during a day or night. I appreciate so much your being there. 
and for responding. After we go off the air, if we can be of help during extremes in your life, we want to do this in the name of Christ. Our mailing address is Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. We're not here to merchandise products, but since this is the only location or address for people to acquire these particular items, we give it out for what it might be worth to you. Back to our subject of weather warning tonight. The poetess wrote one little piece entitled Storm. Fierce driving rain lashing my window pane, slashing at house and tree, frightening me with thunder and flashes, fanfare of power. Awesome to see. Then, sudden peace. The torrents cease. Rumble is distant, maelstrom muffled. Whispering breeze calms my world. A hawk circles silently in slow motion. Many birds chip carefree joy to the rhythmic accompaniment of the dripping downspout. Neither is my inward storm a destructive holocaust. It is your trauma, Lord, your grand production staged to teach me your perfect ways. Nature's storm is over, and so is mine. Time for applause, time to open the window, breathe the bracing freshness. Time to lift my face and revel in lingering raindrops, caressing my cheek and washing my tears. Tonight, let's remember that there can be rescue and release and a calm assurance from the midst of the storm without and within. Yeah.
and it very well could be tonight, that the greatest test of our endurance occurs when suffering a natural or inner disaster almost smothers us, and we're tempted to pose the question, why? And in the full face of affliction, it's very difficult to see any sense to things that come upon us, and we want to question the fairness and the faithfulness of God. But you know, it's in these particular moments of distress that could be the most meaningful of our lives. The ancient prophet Joel quotes God in Joel chapter 2, verse 25, I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten. God is not unmindful of your distress, mine tonight, whether it be a natural disaster or an inner one. He asks for our hearts and our allegiance to trust in Him. All things work together for the good to those who trust in our God and are called according to His purpose. Thank you for sharing these moments of consolation tonight with me. Our mailing address remains Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. I want to thank you sincerely for being there tonight. God bless you and keep you through the storm. Until we meet again, a peaceful good night to all of you. And we'll see you next time 